lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Oh no.
song, Fred Hammond song, In Kids. Yes, indeed. Whew, my God, what a blessing. Hey, listen, I'm so glad that everybody has gathered now, and we can go ahead on and get started. We've got some powerful things we want to drop into your spirit. Welcome to the Loretta Petit Show. Women winning at life from ministry to marketplace. Regardless of where you are on your journey, it's still customizable. So keep working on it and keep working on you. You know, it is my joy to perpetuate a winning mindset and perspective in you. To encourage faith, inspire action, and stir up your passion. I'm Loretta Petit, your host. And as the song said from Romans 8 and 28, all things will work together for our good. Let's just never throw in the towel and never give up. Let's pray. Father, we come now to say thank you for today, for this blessed opportunity to have the ears of your people, the hearts of your people. And we pray, oh God, that the seed that we deposit today will be seed that will cause them to grow exponentially, oh God, and well-roundedly as such. So, Father, we thank you today. We ask that you would get your glory out of what is uh, going forth tonight, and we pray, Lord God, that your people will be helped. Bless my awesome producer and Mr. Jerry Royce, and thank you, Lord God, as you continue to bless my guests. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. My God, I'm so excited to be sharing with you on tonight. Uh, We have some days that's a little bit more rough than others, weather-wise, especially in this season for me, uh, but sometimes busy, 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 busy busy-wise as well. But today I have an opportunity to really, really just enjoy this space. So um, without any further ado, I have a guest uh, that is sharing with me on today. I pray she made her way in. She has, uh, I've been reading on some things that she's been about, and she's been real busy uh, she is Tanika Latrice. She's also an author, and we're just so honored to have her here with us today. So good evening, Miss Tanika. How are you? I am good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, I am blessed to be a blessing, and I just thank the Lord for that. So Tanika, you know, we're going to rush right on through this thing because before you know it, time is going to be up. <laughs> but um, I do hope that you had a great day today. And I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Um, Yes. Um, My name is Tanika Latrice. I am a survivor. I'm the author of No More Secrets, The Truth Behind Her um, Smile. Also the founder of a nonprofit called Bruised But Not Destroyed. I'm an abuse advocate, a mental health advocate, just about raising awareness and breaking the silence of abuse. Oh, I I do apologize. I'm on mute, guys, just talking away. Oh, my God. So let me repeat what I said since you guys couldn't hear me. I'm so sorry. Thank you for that introduction of yourself, um, Tanika. But I was saying that if people would just really have acted right, done the things we need to do, uh, there would really not be a need for an abuse advocate. But because people act out and because of whatever's going on with them that caused them to not be in control, We need advocates, activists, supporters. We need the whole gamut. So kudos to you. Um, I know that you mentioned that you are an author, and I did mention that as well. Could you give us a little insight into, first of all, your journey to authorship, and then a little bit about your book? What caused you to want to write? What caused you to be able to make it happen for yourself. Okay. Uh, Tanika, are you on mute? (laughs) All righty. Don't know what happened there. I can't hear my guest anymore. Uh, Let me double check something here. I don't know. We don't usually have this problem. Okay, so I'm checking with my producer, but in the in the meantime, um, I can't hear you though. Uh, so I can't hear her. She can hear me, but I can't hear her. Um, what? Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Bam, bam, bam. 
Thank you, Miss Tanika. Tanika, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened, but anyway, uh, do you need me to repeat the question for you? Oh no, I heard you. So um, okay. it was ther- It was basically therapy for me. I had gotten to a point where I had reached a really, really low point of my life, like almost like a mental break, and I just began writing. And writing was literally like therapy for me. And as I began to write things that I had buried from a long time ago, I had to actually sit there and deal with them at that point. And it actually helped me heal. Yes, that's beautiful. Uh, And a little bit about your book. So my book is basically uh, a synopsis of my entire life story of abuse. Um, Basically, I've known abuse my whole life from child abuse. So once you start getting into relationships as a teenager and in an early 20s, you know, domestic violence, domestic violence in my, my first marriage, and then I went on to, um, in my second marriage, marry someone, molested all three of my children. I was a victim of molestation. So it was basically just telling my story and letting people know that this isn't an isolated incident. As I was writing and interviewing other people, I come to find out that this is this is actually like an epidemic. This is running rampant in the community. It's just what's what goes on in my house stays in my house. Is the mentality a lot of the households have, so it doesn't ever get addressed or dealt with. It just gets swept under the rug. Right, right, right. Uh, if you're listening in, uh, this is the Loretta Petit Show. You can call in at six four six five six four nine eight four two. Say that kind of quick, right? <laughs> That's six four six. Five six four nine eight four two. If you have a question or a comment, write it down for when you do. One more time: six four six five six four nine eight four two. I want to go back to what you, something you just said, uh, Tanika. Uh, what happens in my house stays in my house. Yes, you all right. When I was coming up as a little girl, that was the mindset. That was the mindset. Uh, but I don't think it was. Well, I. Maybe I was just clueless, but I never thought it was because these secret things were happening. I thought it was just because, you know, we wanted to look as good as the Joneses next door, or we didn't want people to know that maybe the check was short last week, or, you know, didn't want them to know uh, that we didn't have the latest furnishings in the house. You know, little things like that, vanity things. But as I became older, you're right, it's like an epidemic I started to find out that so many things that look shiny and new on the outside, that look like they had the latest this and the best of that, but they were having all these things going on in the home. And, yep. again, I was naive back then, but as I got older and these stories start coming out, I'm like, wow, and I envied them, and I wanted to be them, and I wanted to live like them, but little did I know what was really going on. My. My mind. So we do need those advocates, absolutely, like you, and uh, people that's not willing to throw in his towel and give up on others who are going through, because firsthandedly we know what's happening. And even though things like that didn't happen in my home, it doesn't mean I was exempt. It did happen, but maybe not in the home. But so many, are, you know, people can identify with what you're saying uh, that things are happening. Now, I have to admit, though, with the child abuse thing, yeah, yeah, we can chalk it up to that. That's what that's that's teetering the line for me, because my dad was a disciplinarian, but as I look back, I'm like, yeah, but that was like, like really, really much, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a um, there's a big difference between um, I believe and discipline your children. I believe me, I, I believe in that, but there is a difference between discipline and abuse. abuse. So, and a lot of times because we have become so accustomed to the abuse that we received as children, we just see it as discipline because we're desensitized to it. So, Right. And, and see, that particular conversation that you and I are having about the discipline and the abuse, um, I think, according to what generation you're in, you see things a little bit differently. Because exactly. and, and you yeah. And you know, you see things a little bit differently. And then even as the children of maybe the sixties or the seventies, um, or even the fifties, and we still have a lot of people around, they 
certain things they would mind a little bit better uh, than kids of maybe the 80s or the 90s. Uh, they were seen and not heard, and people of the 80s and 90s said, oh, well, that wasn't cool. Uh, but there were certain conversations that they weren't allowed in either. So if adults were talking, they went in another room where they couldn't hear it. But some of the families I've talked to and observed of the 80s and the 90s, uh, their kids are right in every conversation. So, you know, it's just the differences. And I think we just got to find that balance, that thing that really, really works uh, straight across the board if, you know, if we can. Um, so I, I, I totally agree. I don't, I don't uh, con- condone, um, you know, abuse, but I also don't condone people that just don't, you know, uh, um Enforce, you know. You say a lot Same of things. Thing. Oh, you, you know, uh, you you're not going to get this. I'm going to punish you for that. But you exactly. have to have some kind of enforcement. You got to say what you mean, exactly. and you have to what? You have, to you have consequences. But just make sure you're not going over that border of disciplining from discipline to abuse, knocking teeth down, knocking teeth out, and knocking them down your throat, oh, breaking noses, breaking noses, being whipped with extension cords so your skin is open and you have to go to the that that's abuse. That's that's there's I don't I care what you. way you look at it, that's abuse. I told you. That is that is yeah. to the extreme. So what yeah. are, you know, you're doing a good work and maybe you, you can maybe uh, touch on uh, some of the things you've done in the community because I think that you've been busy there as well. Yes, definitely. Um we opened our we launched a nonprofit organization in well actually in July of two thousand and eighteen. We didn't get our official five oh one C three until September of two thousand and eighteen and we started off, you know, providing resources like food, toiletries, referrals to other organizations that provided mental health therapy, um, help with relocation assistance or, you know, help with teaching them how to get injunctions and things like that. And then this year in August, we officially launched an emergency and transitional house to house um, people in a program to help them become self-sufficient. And within nine days of opening the doors, it was completely filled. And now we're literally over capacity. That's why we are, yeah, we are seeking to open up uh, two new facilities by the beginning of the, the year. But with our program, the self-sufficiency program, not only just houses these people uh, or these victims, I call them victims or su- survivors because they've survived, um, but we teach them how to become self-sufficient so they don't land themselves right back in the situation in a cycle. So teach them about the importance of credit, financial literacy, budgeting, um, job placement, um, teach them, you know, help them with goals such as short-term and long-term goals, um, action plans, so that by the time they leave, we make sure that they don't have to go back. That is a beautiful thing. I'm so down with that. There's so much similar to what, um, you know, something I have doing right now, but I think that's absolutely awesome. Um, let's just pause for a quick moment to see if there was any callers. We did give out the number 646564. 9842. If you have a question for Lanique, uh, Tanika or myself, I'm just screwing up your name. Please forgive me, Tanika. 646 uh, If there's a caller on the line, um, they certainly can go forth at this time. But if not, I do want to uh, let you know if you're just tuning in, it's the Loretta Petite Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. I want to give a shout out to all of you born in this month. Happy birthday to you. I um, want to say to you that's uh, sharing an anniversary on this day, a uh, happy anniversary, keeping it together. Be sure to tell others your secrets of how to keep those marriages together because the enemy is hot up on our trails, but we've got to know how to work through our situations, that conflict resolution. Man, that's a treasure. If you can find that, that's awesome. So on today, mm-hmm. uh, we're just taking a quick little break. We're going to go right back and talk to Tanika for the final part of our, our talk today. But I do want to take this moment to um, just say that November brings in a National Gratitude Month. Count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. Uh, just be grateful. Uh, please be grateful. It's so important that we have grateful hearts. We can be so much nicer when we can realize how blessed and how great, um, how great our blessings have been and are. It is uh, National Pizza with the Works Day. It's National Chicken for the 
chicken soup for the soul day today. But what I want to point your attention to is something you can get ready for, and that's tomorrow. It's World Kindness Day. So find a way to reach out and touch somebody with your love, with your kindness. Uh, That's what's happening in the world tomorrow, World Kindness Day. Uh, Somebody may reach out and be kind, extra kind to you. Who knows? But take it upon yourself. Be a committee of one and spread some kindness on tomorrow. Spread kindness like a cold like a virus. Let your compassion shine through. Amen. That's what it's all about. And all the work that Tamika is doing, it's about her compassion. It's about her call. It's about her ministry. Her misery became her ministry. So we're so happy to have Tamika Latrice with us today. And so, uh, Tamika, you're doing a great work in the community. You're housing, you're, you're at capacity and over capacity. You've got a book that's going to shine the light on what happens behind closed doors that can help so many people. Uh, let me just ask you, um, what are your future goals? You, you're doing so well with what you're doing, uh, but what about uh, outside of the work? Uh, what are you doing for uh, Tanika? What what makes you happy? What brings joy to you and what makes you laugh? And, and what are you doing? What are some of your goals uh, for the future? To be honest, I get a lot of joy from this. It's this is my purpose. Literally, my pain produced my purpose, and I get so much joy being able to reach and help others. Just it and being able to connect with them and letting them know that they aren't alone. And then they're like, "Whoa! If she did it, I know I can do it." So that that brings me a lot of joy. Getting my children involved, letting them know how to reach down and help others. That. It, it brings me so much joy. So the future goals, um, basically the first goal is to be doing this full-time. I'm basically doing this full-time and kind of working my job full-time still, but within the next six months, the goal is to just be working the nonprofit full-time and firing my, mm-hmm. my employer. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Mm-hmm. So okay, that's the so goal. That's awesome. how we're- and so how we're doing that is um, we're working to open up the uh, the thrift store. We've been doing weekly uh, garage sales with all the donations that we get. And it's been going, like, really well to the point where we're working to get a, a thrift store to also help provide um, basically the sustainability for the nonprofit. Awesome. So you have a way what, – what city are you in? I'm in Florida. Okay, so you have a way where people can – donate to you in Florida? Um, Absolutely. Is there is, how they can connect yes, with you? Yes, they can actually um, donate through our uh, website. So the website is www.bravo-bravo-november-delta-india-november-charlie.org. So that's www.bbnbinc.org. Um, they can it. donate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, say it to me again. I'm gonna write it down as well. So I'm gonna spell it phonetically. So Bravo. So Bravo. Bravo. November. Delta. India. November. Charlie. Dot org. Okay. So that's V B N G I N C dot org. That's correct. It stands for Bruised but Not Destroyed Ink. Okay, and you had another comment you wanted to make on that. Um, yes, they can. So they can donate there right on the donate um, now page. Um, they can um, also there's a donate button on our Facebook page that goes directly to the website. You can find us on Facebook at Bruised but Not Destroyed, or on Instagram at Bruised but Not Destroyed. Absolutely. The final thing I want to ask you before we get out of here is offer up a success tip for someone who's struggling right now on their journey, be it from abuse, be it from uh, lack of self-confidence, be it from whatever. What success tip can you give, Um, you know, just a blanket success tip straight across the board, something that could help someone who may be tuned in? It is never too late and never give up. Nothing beats a failure but a try. You don't know what you can do if you never try to do it. So don't be afraid to try. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, Ms. Tanika Latrice. 
I'm so glad that you were my guest today. You gave us some very, very good information, and it's truly been a pleasure talking to you. I applaud the great work that you It's so necessary. And I am elated that that brings you so much joy uh, because you'll do it for a very long time if, uh, you know, you see it as your purpose. So I thank the Lord for you, and I pray that God continues to bless the fruit of your labor. So now as we prepare to close out, oh, you're so welcome. As we prepare to close out, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, Please join me right here next Thursday once again. Uh, Always have a powerful sister to share powerful words with you, and today was no different. So, of course, keep Christ ever before you. Remember, COVID-19 is still on the rise in some cities. It definitely is in my city. Uh, Wash your hands, socially distance yourself. And uh, use that sanitizer when you can't get to the soap and water and wear your mask. John Rockefeller said these words, don't be afraid of giving up the good to go for the great. I know that greatness is within you. I believe God. If you have faith and you walk with him, you know that you know that you know that things can change and they will change. I want to perpetuate a winning mindset and a perspective in you. I want to encourage your faith. I want to inspire you to action and to stir up your passion. Whomever you are, your journey is still customizable. Put your faith in God and know that all things will work together for your good. Thank you, Kimmy Kim. I love you, girl. Thank you so much, my guest today, Ms. Tamika. I'm Loretta Petit. This has been the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry the marketplace. Tanika, are you winning at life? Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. I'm Loretta Petit, and I, too, am winning at life. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Once again, I'm standing here ashamed. My sinful ways have caused you so much pain Doing things you told me not to do Lord, I need a healing touch from you So I asked the Lord if he would change my Touch from you would provide a brand new start. Change my heart and my spirit.